ask you to leave. You're hurting my elbow. <laughs> Titans, go! The Sony PlayStation 2 initially released in the year 2000, instantly becoming a hit across the globe, outselling its competition and even eventually becoming the best-selling video game console of all time, selling over 155 million units worldwide. 22 years after its release, is it still worth buying a PS2 in 2022? <laughs> Sony's introduction to the video game industry began with the original PlayStation which launched in 1994, after Sony wanted to get back at Nintendo for terminating their partnership they had for a Super Nintendo CD add-on. Nintendo's betrayal turned into their worst nightmare when the PS1 became the first home console to sell over 100 million units, selling 102 million units, which makes the Nintendo 64's 32 million units look pathetic. Still an amazing console though. What Sony had planned for the next console generation proved to be huge. The first console to release during the sixth generation was the Sega Dreamcast, which initially launched during the holiday season of 1998 in Japan, and later came out everywhere else throughout 1999, which ended up selling over 500,000 units during its first two weeks of it being released, which is fairly impressive. However, it had no match for the PS2, which came out the following year, where Sony made $250 million in the PlayStation 2's first day, combining sales of games, controllers, and consoles. These ruthless sales by Sony is what eventually drove Sega to discontinue the Dreamcast only a month after the PS2 launched in April of 2001, and drove Sega out of making new hardware since. The other competition Sony had to come up against this generation was the Nintendo GameCube, and Microsoft's first attempt in the console market being the original Xbox. Both of these legendary consoles are truly amazing, with the GameCube being my personal favourite this generation. However, the sales were miles behind the PS2. The PlayStation 2 sold over 155 million units which made it the best selling console of all time, while the OG Xbox only sold 24 million units, and the GameCube being slightly behind Microsoft with 22 million units sold, and dead last, the Dreamcast which only sold 9 million units worldwide. A part of each other's lives. After Sony's ambitious launch of the original PlayStation, Sony immediately started planning and developing the PlayStation 2. One of the main ideas Sony had for the next console was to make it able to play DVDs, since it was the latest media format at the time. Sony also made the PS2 backwards compatible, meaning it can play all PS1 games flawlessly. And just like the PS1, the PS2 could also play CDs. The backwards compatibility for PS1 games on the PS2 made it easy for people to upgrade since they already had a large library of games from the previous generation, and also the PS2 was the cheapest DVD player, meaning that many people bought it just to use as a DVD player alone. This choice by Sony only boosted the sales for the PS2, and increased the popularity of the DVD format. The PS2 was so successful it didn't get discontinued until 2013, which is the same year the PS4 released, and the last PS2 game to ever be released was FIFA 14. later in the PS2's lifespan, Sony released a new hardware revision known as the PlayStation 2 Slim, which is significantly smaller than the original. It came with a built-in LAN port, and offers all the same features as the original does, with the exception of the inability to install an internal hard drive on the back, which was originally intended to play games online since the original model didn't have a LAN port. Installing an internal hard drive in the original model PS2 would even allow you to install Linux on your PS2, turning it into a full desktop PC. This was surely discontinued, however. The ability to add an internal SSD hard drive and USB storage devices on the PS2 nowadays are mainly used for playing PS2 ROMs.
Almost every console has some options of software mods or better known as homebrew, and the PS2 is no exception. Homebrew on the PS2, which is known as Freemic Boot, and having it on your PS2 is a must going into 2022. The easiest way to get Freemic Boot is by purchasing a memory card online from eBay. I know it's annoying and it's not like most other consoles where you can just get homebrew by only using a USB or an SD card, but honestly, buying a memory card online that already has the files is so much easier because it beats having to burn a CD. Not to mention, buying a 64 megabyte Freemic Boot memory card would mean that you'd never run out of space on your memory card for all your save files. Using a Freemic Boot memory card will allow you to run a variety of different programs, such as being able to play PS1 and 2 ROMs off the USB, internal or external hard drive, increase the resolution of PS2 games higher than 480p to up to 1080i, providing that you have the right outputs, transfer your PS2 save files onto your USB and vice versa, and much more. But if there's one program that you have to have a Freemic Boot memory card for, that I think is vital for owning a PS2 in 2022 is definitely a program called OPL. OPL is a program that allows you to play PS1 and 2 ISO files directly from an external hard drive or USB. This program is so helpful, especially if you don't want to keep swapping out discs every time you want to play a game. PS2 was also home to so many amazing exclusive games and franchises, with instant classics like Ratchet and Clank, Jack and Daxter, Tekken, God of War, Okami, Kingdom Hearts, Ico, Shadow of the Colossus, and Katamari Damacy, just to name a few. You also can't forget about the third party support this console generation with games like Resident Evil 4, Metal Gear Solid 3, The Simpsons Hit and Run, Dead or Alive 2, and so much more. This console generation is also when the GTA franchise revolutionised open world environments in video games with GTA 3 in 2001 and soon followed by the even better sequels being Vice City in 2002 and San Andreas in 2004. This trilogy of games alone was worth getting a PS2 back in the day. Even though a lot of these games have been ported or remastered to newer hardware, it's hard to forget where these games originated from, and in some cases the PS2 versions are even better than the ports or remakes. PlayStation 2 had a plethora of strange and silly attachments and controllers, and Sony even made a TV with a PS2 console built into it around 2010, years after the PS3 launched for whatever reason. Arguably the most notorious add-on for the PlayStation 2 was the iToy, which was a motion-based camera which released in October of 2003. This camera is most similar to the Xbox 360 Kinect from 2010. This makes Sony's PS2 the first platform to have true motion controls, even though the Wii truly spread popularity of motion controls more than anything else at the time. Even Netflix could be used on the PS2 via a disc that was exclusive to Brazil. However, it was discontinued in 2012, for obvious reasons. <laughs> The only other bizarre feature about the PS2 I'm going to talk about is Sony's attempt at releasing official update discs, allowing you to update your PlayStation's firmware via update discs. This feature was barely utilised since you needed a PlayStation 2 memory card to install the updates, and your console firmware would downgrade as soon as you took the memory card out. As we know now, long firmware and software updates on consoles via the internet have been cursing us since the 7th generation of consoles, which includes the PS3, Xbox 360, and even though nowhere near as high of a calibre, but the Wii also falls to this category as well.
PS2's hardware honestly wasn't too impressive for early 2000s standards, especially compared to the original Xbox which was the most powerful console of that generation. Developers still blew everyone's expectations away with how games looked on the PS2. The hardware of the console included the Motion Engine CPU which was clocked at 299MHz, which was the main rendering chip to render games and maximise performance and overall quality of the games being played. The PS2 has 32MB of RAM and a 150MHz graphics synthesizer GPU, which essentially was like the graphics chip. Like I already mentioned, the PS2 could take advantage of a hard drive, which would run Linux, and it's mostly useful for playing PS2 ROMs with a Freemic boot card nowadays. But judging by the sales numbers, the power of the PS2 did not matter at all whatsoever. Now for the two people who haven't clicked off the video yet. Should you buy a PS2 in 2022? That is a complicated question, which is why I'd rather answer two questions. Should you experience the PS2's library one way or another, and should you actually go out of your way to buy an official PS2 console? Both the answers are yes, depending on who you are and what suits your needs. PlayStation 2 and the 6th generation of consoles in general have some of the best games ever released and have one of the best libraries of all time. Many of the best PS2 games have been ported to newer hardware such as the PS3, 4 and 5. And playing the PS2's games is definitely 100% worth doing. Even if you just emulate PS2 games on your PC or something, PS2 still has an amazing amount of games to play, both exclusive and third party, available on other platforms too. And should you actually buy a PS2 console? Honestly, I'd say it depends. If you would prefer to add a new console to your collection and collect a bunch of physical games, then I would definitely recommend having a PS2, because it is an amazing reliable console that doesn't have many hardware flaws today. However, unless you buy third-party output adapters, playing the PS2 on any type of modern flat-screen TV will look really horrible. It will look really blurry because of the low resolution. Realistically, the best way to play a PS2 is by having an old CRT TV, since these games were programmed to look amazing on CRTs. And also, not to mention, you'll get less input delay and you'll be able to play light gun games on top of that with no issues. But overall, I think it's worth buying a PS2 in 2022, or at least, one way or another, whichever suits your needs, experiencing the PS2's library to some capacity.